Do you recognize that terrifying sound? Want to see what the Queen's bike looks like? We are in the wonderful world of wheels, the Bicycle Museum, the only bicycle museum in the Netherlands. They have one of the largest and the most important bicycle collection in the world. We have over 500 bicycles before the year 1900. Other museums uh, just don't have the kinds of uh, bikes we have. The pedomotives, the monomotives, the tricycle carriages, the quadricycles. We have a big collection before the year around about 1865, so before the invention of the pedal bike. And that makes it really interesting. What kind of person would like to come to this museum? Everyone will enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> so why did we wait so long for the bicycle? How did the first bicycle come? come about. Yeah, this is a rolling cart from the year 1420. So oh. what we try to show here in the museum is that the bicycle isn't just an invention which was made 200 years ago, but people were developing human powered vehicles for hundreds and hundreds of years. But it took until 1817 uh, when Carl van Drees came up with the idea of the Lauf machine or the balance bike. And what we try to answer in this museum is why wasn't the bicycle invented earlier? Because all the technical stuff was there, but someone just didn't came up with the idea. So maybe, and that's the answer, there was a cultural reason why the bicycle wasn't invented earlier. One of those reasons could be that traveling uh, before the two-wheeler was always done uh, with two people or more at least. So if you have in your cultural mind that you have to uh, travel with two or more people, uh, you cannot come up with a two-wheeler easy because you have to balance on two wheels. To do that on your own is difficult, but with two people it's almost impossible. For instance, in 1805, so years before the invention made by Carl van Drees, we had an inventor in the Netherlands, Hendrik Nieberg, who came up with the tricycle in 1805. And you're looking at the stock market of Rotterdam. If you blow up the picture, you can see it's a one-person vehicle. It has little horses in front, so it's intended to replace the horse and horse and carriage. And this is actually the oldest picture I know uh -huh. of a human-powered vehicle intended for one person for a general public. So mm -hmm. just after 1800, uh, ideas changed uh, mm -hmm. uh, regarding transportation. It was becoming more safe to travel on your own. That idea that it was more safe uh, was because of the French Revolution. Napoleon built a lot of new roads which made it more easy uh, but also more safe to travel on your own. But, however, uh, the first balance bike and uh, most of them help little boxers not to carry on money but to carry a little gun because the people who could pay for a balance bikes were really rich uh, but they had to protect themselves and if they traveled on their own they had to bring a little gun with them here you have a little box you can see oh, to open it to put a little, little gun, gun a pistol uh, in it uh, if you put uh, change money, it falls down, so it's not intended uh, for, for money. You can't put everything in there. Uh, this is a Burg, and at the time this costed 80 uh, Austrian uh, guilders. If you how much that is. translate that, uh, a normal worker had to wear, work for half a year to be able to, to buy oh it. Gosh, so but then you don't have money for rent. These bikes of, and this age was really just for the wealthy. And so the first bicycle two-wheeler was invented by Carl Drees. Drees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and do you have that here? We Is don't have an original Carl Drees because they are just unavailable. You cannot buy them. We have actually 20 balanced bikes. And uh -huh. In the whole world there are only 60 originals left. Uh, 60 originals. So we wow. have one third of the world possession. And actually in the Netherlands there is an original Dresin made by Carl van Drees, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still in possession of the royal family. And that's actually one of the most beautiful one in the world, but it's straight
traveling all across the world oh, so it has been here uh -huh. uh, but sometimes it has to go and this is one oh. resin which resembles I see uh, the original yeah. a little bit you have to steer which you can adjust in height you have the seating which you can adjust oh. in height because with the balance bike the height is really important eh? because not everyone has the same size legs this bar is just to put your lower leg oh. or low, lower arms on uh -huh. it yeah, so you have a little bit of uh, support I at the back there's also a little mud guard as you can see so they and will... it doesn't turn right yeah yeah oh it yeah. does turn and here we have uh, something here you can put on for instance a little light because most of our vehicles also uh, had lanterns at the time they even had a little reflector mirror so here there's a mirror on it oh my so this was more noticeable if we look at this vehicle this is a de la Haye from 1847 and by definition this is the oldest bicycle in the world and why is that? You have two wheels, so you have to balance on it. You have an indirect power movement, so you never touch the ground with your feet. Oh. It's like a rowing uh, machine. Oh, and you I steer see. this one with your feet. I see. But this is really inefficient. It's also really difficult to ride it. And there's a little brake on it. If I pull this, a little it block. Oh, it. wow. It also has some suspension inside of I the see. frame here. Yeah. Oh Would you ride any of these bikes? Uh, these things were also fun vehicles. So for instance here we have a yellow regime. And the funny part is if I turn the steer to the left, yes. the wheel goes to the right. Ah. To the right to the left. Oh gosh. It has some suspension inside of the frame you see. And to enter the vehicle you had to pull out the pin ah. and you could open the oh, door. To open up. And there's even so a small hidden box. If I pull a rope here, yes. I can open the box to oh. put in some stuff. Have you ridden any of these bikes? I tried this pedo mano motive carriage, but it's counterintuitive. So you have to give power by your hand and with one feet like this. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you have to steer with your other feet uh -huh. and you have to brake also with the feet. Uh -huh. It just doesn't work inside in of head. my brain. I see. I, That's I like to pedal and right. steer with my hand. People cannot quite get over the transition from horse and carriage to the bicycle. If you notice some of the bicycles They've added horse embellishments on their bikes. The hobby horse or the Dresine, it was like a fashion thing. I see. It lasted five years and then it faded away. What word should every cyclist know? Velocipede. What is a velocipede? It is a lightweight wheeled bicycle propelled by the rider, usually with his feet. And it was named the bone shaker. Now, why was that? They had no suspension, they did not have air tires, and most of them had wooden wheels and iron frames, hence bone shaker while you're riding. This is actually also the only philosophy in the world with little caps to prevent a trouser from getting dirty because here's a little grease hole. Oh um, this bicycle is actually made for Willem Benjamin Smith. And in 1868, Willem Benjamin Smith became eight years old. We know he used it to go to school, but it doesn't have a brake. So there should be a beam here. Then you can turn the steer a little bit around like this. Oh, I see. And then a little block comes to the wheel. Oh. Uh, but at the time you had to pay extra for a braking system. I see. And because in the Netherlands we don't have hills, they mm. thought, well, we don't have to use a brake. Because if you stop pedaling with these kinds of velocities, uh, the vehicle also slows down. However, <laughs> in the first year, uh, people were riding into the canals, into the ponds, into the lakes. Because yes, in the Netherlands we don't have hills, but we do have dikes. <laughs> and if a dike ends and a canal comes, you have to break fast. Uh, after the first uh, two years, I think, uh, a braking system was also common in the Netherlands. It doesn't have 
a little place to put your lower legs on. So if you go downhill, you put your lower legs on the brackets oh. and with your legs in front of you, you go downhill. Oh. But again, the same reasoning. We don't have any hills in the Netherlands, so right. we don't have to use the brackets. Right. Bicycle clothing, I love bicycle clothing. The first velocipedes in France, they had really small pedals. And that was because young boys and men, they had the fashion to wear boots like this. Ah. Of, uh, the, the boots were ah, fixed in a small see. part of the pedal. Uh, in the Netherlands, we had like flat shoes or clogs. So that's why we had uh, wider pedals. Oh, in interesting. Um, there's a little velocipede uh, oh, on the wow. front. Huh? Before gears and chains were invented, how did the bicycle work? The only way to shift the gear was to replace the wheel. So for instance, here we have a tricycle, which is very, very special. You steer it by the feet, you power it by the hand. If you want to brake, you lean backwards, because then via a system, a block comes to the wheel. The main thing is that you can also change the front wheel. So if you want to go fast, you put in the big wheel because if you turn your pedal one turn around you make more meters if you want to climb a hill you change the wheel and put in the small wheel at the front so before they used the chain and the gearing system like uh, we have nowadays they had to change the wheel there was no other option because with that uh, bicycle over there yes. you have two pedals if you want to go climb a hill you take the front wheel if you want to go fast, you can pedal at the back wheel. This actually has two steers. Oh my God, that is so interesting. So again, to go fast, you can sit on the big wheel. To climb a hill, you can sit on the small wheel. And here at the front, there's a small hole. So you can put in a pin to lock one of the steers because otherwise it won't work. The braking, uh, oh, mud guards. And... In the last part of the 19th century, the bicycle evolved into penny farthings. The first person in the world who imported a uh, philosophy into the continent of Africa was actually uh, Alexandrine Tinne. And Alexandrine Tinne was a real emancipated woman from the Netherlands. She was a researcher, she was an explorer, and she tried to find the source of the Nile. And with almost a hundred people personnel she traveled across the desert but she also asked her uncle to send over a philosophy from france uh, but after a few tries she came to the conclusion that cycling in countries with a lot of sand is not possible so after that this dutch explorer uh, gave the probably tricycle uh, to one of the local uh, lords uh, unfortunately alexandrine tinne a few months later she was killed by the Tuaregs uh, because she was traveling on her own, almost like a queen with a lot of personnel. And at the time, the men over there, they didn't accept a woman to behave like that. So unfortunately, she was killed, uh, but she was the first one to import uh, uh, philosophy into the continent of Africa. Did women ride these bikes? No, not really. At what point did women start riding? Bikes. Actually, women were using tricycles much, much more until 1888 than the bike because they had the fashion to wear big dresses so they could ride a tricycle. And at the time, they were also thinking that in the future we were all uh, going to ride a tricycle because it was suited for women, for small children, for old people, for people with disability, mm -hmm. for people uh, working for a church, for instance. But that all changed because someone came up with the idea to put uh, pneumatic air tires on the bike, which made it more comfortable to ride it. So on here on the left side, we have a functional steer, but the, on the right side, the steer doesn't work. So at first, this was the place for a woman. She couldn't decide where to go to, but she could pedal along and the man decided where to go to. Later on, and it took maybe 10 years, 
they made boat steering functional. Mm -hmm. And they even added a little beam between the steers because you want to go the same oh. direction, of course. So within the tandems, you can see a little bit of the social development or the emancipation of women. This is a Puck and Tunet bicycle. And this is really important because of the chain which is on it. Oh. The chain, that's the chain we still use today for our modern bikes. And the modern chain was actually developed for this bicycle and for no other bicycle in the whole world. So that's why this is so important. Oh, and this was a cooperation between Puch and Tonet. Tonet was making furniture and Puch was making vehicles and they tried to show that you can, could use bent wood to make really good uh, and attractive uh, bicycles. And this was made for fast cycling, as you can see. Yeah. Now, suspension makes cycling comfortable. However, if you don't have pneumatic air tires, to make it more comfortable, you have to do something. Uh, with your frame, for instance, or underneath of your saddle. Uh, there's always a little coil underneath of your saddle. That's because of sp suspension. In this museum, we show a lot of bicycles with special suspension. The leaf-like uh, suspension underneath the saddle, so no coil. This one, if I pull it, push it down, the whole frame does like this. So Gosh. this gives a, a little bit of, su su of suspension, but obviously it wasn't enough. Eh? They just had to have uh, air tires. Uh, that see. made it really comfortable. And but before that, they made things like this. This bicycle is really important for the development of the modern uh, bicycle. This is called the safety cycle. And safety bicycles were developed uh, as a reaction onto the penny farting. Mm -hmm. So the bicycle with the big front wheel, the small back wheel. On those bikes, if you fall down, <laughs> you fall down like two meters with 30 kilometers an hour. So you break an arm, a leg, or you have a hole in your head. To make the penny farting more safe, you have to make the wheel smaller. But if you want to go as fast as you did, you have to use some kind of gearing system. So, or a chain. And you can see on the, this is really the first type of uh, safety cycle. It has a chain. It almost has like a diamond shaped frame, but not quite. It has still has uh, the leaf-like uh, suspension underneath the saddle, so no coal. Uh, there's still a little pin here on the left side to get up on the bike. At the front, there's still room to put your feet if you go downhill. This uh, safety cycle is actually made by a rover company. And in Poland, the bicycle is also called a rover because of this bike. The main shape of the modern bicycle hasn't changed that much. Yes, you can see some differences, but the differences are not as big as they were with the vehicles made before this. For exhibitions, this is from oh the Second World War. Oh my god! If you, li if you listen to this uh, bell, it's from the Nazi area. Uh, <laughs> Then you know a Nazi is coming, yeah? You don't really want to hear that sound. <laughs> that is an yeah, right. incredible piece of history there. Sound. We are in the Bicycle Museum, the only bicycle museum in the Netherlands. The bike for the queen. Here we stand next to a nice little woman's bike. And this was actually owned by a former queen, Queen Beatrix. And she shared this bicycle with her sister uh, Margriet. I like the fact that they shared a bike because most people in the Netherlands shared a bike at the time. So our royal family isn't that different uh, from all of us. Eh? Oh. Okay, yeah. just have a quick look. So I just back out. Oh, it's so amazing up here, but you know what? You guys are gonna have to come to the museum to see what's up here. I'm not telling you. <laughs> so if you like bikes, inventions, and history, you have to come and see the Bicycle Museum. Hope to see you riding.